Hi folks, uh, welcome back. I'm out this weekend with Zed from Zed Outdoors. Um, we're out for a, an overnight camp in a nice little bit of woodland in the Norfolk Broads. Been really looking forward to this. It's been sort of in the planning for a long time. So it's nice to finally be here. We, um, we came by canoe. Uh, the canoe paddle took us a little bit longer than we were expecting. So we're rapidly running out of daylight here. So I'm gonna get a move on. We're gonna get a move on and get uh, our shelters up, get our hammocks set up. Um, and then uh, I'll fill you in a little bit more on what we're up to. The tarp I'm using is a DD super light tarp and then in here we've got a DD frontline hammock somewhere underneath that lot. I've got a down under blanket made by my buddy Ginge and the under blanket protector is also made by him. And then on my top half I've got a down top quilt which was also made by my good friend Ginge and this will be the first time I've used this so um, I'm quite looking forward to trying it out. It's a four season down over blanket basically so uh, it means I don't need to use a sleeping bag I've got my insulation underneath me in the form of the under blanket and that top quilt will insulate the top half of me right well that's me all set up and I thought while there's a little bit of light left I would show you the canoe that we use today this is a silver birch broadland 15 this was very kindly lent to me for the weekend by silver birch canoes they're a Norfolk canoe company they make all of their canoes on site about five miles away from where I live and uh, I've been chatting to them for some time and um, it's been really nice to be able to use one of their canoes. It's made from a material called Duralite, which is uh, a composite plastic, uh, similar in many ways to Royal X. It's got uh, a foam core and they can adjust the thickness of that foam core and the outer plastic layer. The outer is a, a white water gray plastic um, and they can make that thicker at the, at the stems, at the front and at the back of the canoe um, and the foam layer thinner. So it all ends up a uniform layer but there's more foam in the middle and more plastic at the front and the back. So it makes for a much stronger boat for, for impact. You know, obviously if you hit something, you're gonna hit it at the front or the back of the canoe. So it's stronger there where it needs to be. And the rigidity is there through the foam, through the middle of the canoe. And it's an absolute delight to paddle. It's uh, really responsive, it's light. It's a really nice boat. It's been really enjoyable paddling it today. And uh, lovely to paddle a Norfolk built canoe on Norfolk rivers. Right, firewood. We've got uh, quite a bit at our disposal in this bit of woodland. It's not a huge bit of woodland, it looks quite bare because, you know, it's winter and there's no 
leaves on the trees, but it's not a very big woodland anyway, right next to the river. But what there is here are plenty of down trees. So um, I'm going to go and gather some of that up now. Right, well everything is really, really damp. We've been struggling to find dry wood. We've got some, but a lot of it is just really punky. This, this whole woodland here is wet. It is all year round. So um, we're just gonna do the best we can. I've got some of this Hamero Tinder card. You'll see me, you'll have seen me use this loads of times before. I really like the stuff. You just fluff it up. It helps if you split it first. It comes like this, sort of like shiny on both sides. And if you can, just get your fingers in there and split it and then just rough it up with your knife with my lovely new knife which I'll talk about tomorrow and that should take a spark so I've just got some dried grass dry-ish grass here and um, I've made a couple of feather sticks but again that was out of wood that was quite punky so they didn't really come out very well but hopefully it'll be enough just to get things going We're both really hungry. Um, in our effort to get here before it got too dark, we uh, we missed lunch completely. I had a couple of slices of toast this morning before I left the house, but that's that's pretty much it. We we planned on stopping to have lunch on the way on the paddle, but we just um, we decided just to push on and get here because you know it gets dark at half past four and um, doesn't give you a lot of time. So um, yeah, really 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 hungry. I can feel blood sugar is just. I've just feel like I've hit a wall to be honest. <laughs> got, uh, at least we've got all the like laborious sort of camp tasks done, the collecting wood and getting up the shelters and everything. That's all done. But um, yeah, how you how you doing, Zed? Yeah, I'm glad we got everything set up. Yeah, uh, but like yourself, yeah, I think a, a bit of grub down us will uh, grub will go down a tree. So this is your new fire anchor, is it Zed? It is, yeah. So it's a buddy called Trevor who runs TJM Metalworks. So he's a, uh, a very well respected metal worker based in Essex. Um, and I met through uh, his brother, David Fr Fryers, who's a friend of mine. Um, so I went to see David Fryers to do a wild camp at his woodland and we started using this stuff. And I was aware his brother made outdoor cooking wear, but it was only when I was actually with him uh, that he introduced me to this, uh, it's called a small fire anchor. Uh, and he does a large version as well. So this kind of packs down the main piece into two separate sections. Nice. Uh, and it comes with three different arms. Um, and it's really lightweight, you know, and it's great for kind of what we're doing now. Yeah. You know, to kind of get a brew going very quick. You don't have to mess around with tripods or anything like that. It's just done within seconds. So, so yeah, so just get the, the kettle. So what you can do is obviously just adjust the arm. 
we're needed. So we're just going to bring that down. Quite a clever design, isn't it? So obviously, as you put weight on it, that that kind of like tensions it onto the bar, so it doesn't tensions onto the bar, so it doesn't slip, it doesn't move yeah. or anything, you know. Yeah, really clever. Yeah, and obviously, if you need to adjust heat, you can just move it around uh, and stuff. So yeah. And it's just perfect. That's it. It's just sitting just at the right, yeah. the right height. So the tip of the flames are kind of just uh, just catching the the pot. So there you nice. Go. I feel another purchase coming on. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to get on and uh, get dinner ready. Um, it's the 25th of January, which means it's Burns night. So, well. It had to be haggis. Now, Zed is vegetarian, and obviously haggis is very much not vegetarian, so I have picked up a vegetarian haggis. I don't know what's in it, and I didn't bring my glasses, so I can't read the in ingredients, but um, yeah, we'll see what that is like. I'm sure it would be absolutely delicious. I've got some potatoes for the tatties, um, three baking potatoes, because life is too short to peel small potatoes. I buy baking potatoes at home for everything, no matter what it is we're doing baking potatoes. I've got a Swede. Now this is a, a topic of great controversy. A lot of people think that neeps, which is one of the di one of the side dishes that goes with haggis, is turnip. Um, but I have it under good authority from a good Scottish friend of mine that it's not. It's actually Swede. So I've got a small Swede and I'm going to add carrot to it. That isn't tradition but I really like it with the sweetness of the carrot mixed in with the swede. So we're gonna have neeps made from swede and carrot, tatties, which is just mashed potatoes basically, and haggis. That was very thoughtful of you to get the uh, vegetarian uh, That is hag uh, haggis. Ab absolutely my pleasure, we'll see. I think you should save your thanks until we've tasted it to be honest. <laughs> It might be. If it tastes horrible, rank. you can just cook, you can just cook the vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> That's your backup plan. Cup of tea. I can't tell you how much this is needed. Put it this way for four days I didn't go dude. No. Right? And when, and when it dropped on the fourth day, I was like Linford Christie. <laughs> I ran through that wood and there was that like smoke trail coming out of my feet. <laughs> oh man, it was brutal. It was that it was that that harsh that after I I I done my business, I actually had to lay in a hammock for that 20 minutes. <laughs> like literally just to recover. I couldn't even walk. I was just like, you know, it was it was brutal. But it tasted good though. I did enjoy it. We are good here. I'm going to drain these. Right, I'm just going to leave the potatoes and the carrots and the swede um, in the pans just to stay warm and I'll mash them in a minute. But in the meantime, the um, haggis here needs a little bit more. So I'm just going to use my frying pan here and just fry it basically, dry fry it, cook it, heat it through. And um, that should be just a job. Into the mash, I've got some butter here. I'm gonna add a good knob of butter and some milk. Unfortunately, I didn't bring a masher with me, so I'm just gonna use my spatula here to start it off and just smash it up, basically, against the side of the, the 
got a billy can that should do the job. You don't mind your mash a little bit lumpy, do you, Zed? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and then to the carrots and swede, I'm just going to add butter, because you can never have too much butter. I'm just going to do the same, try and smash it up. It's not as easy with carrot and sweet because they don't mash as easily as potato, but we'll give it our best. I really must see if there's such a thing as a collapsible camping potato masher. <laughs> We've got water in the kettle here. I need that for gravy, so that's going to go on. And while that is coming up to the boil, I'm just going to take a look at the haggis, which is looking really good, actually. It smells good, too. But um, I thought I'd give this a little bit of a, a little bit of a zing up with some hot sauce. So I've got one here called Deakin, and um, it's got all sorts of weird and wonderful things in it, like pumpkin and vanilla, Tabasco, Naga Viper chilies, Cayenne, Budlia, vinegar, sea salts, cloves, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, allspice, and molasses. So, um, yeah, we'll give that a little whirl. You're not allergic to any of those things, are you? No, you'll, you'll soon find out. <laughs> well, it smells nice. Actually, it smells, it's got that Tabasco vinegary sort of smell to it. Right. Yeah. I won't put too much in. Did you bring a fire extinguisher? Got a fire extinguisher. And you said you brought a full-size, proper man-sized toilet roll as well, I didn't did, you? I did, yes. Yeah, good, yeah. good. <laughs> Vegetarian vegetable gravy. Lumpy neeps. <laughs> hmm. Kind of like a, a nut roast or something, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Hmm. It's quite nice, that. Let's try some of the mash. Oh, wow. That mash is delicious. Buttery and lumpy. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> Just what we need on a night like this. Definitely. We didn't do a lot of filming really after dinner. We've just sort of been chatting and catching up and, and what have you. But um, yeah, it's been nice just sitting around the fire. Dinner was really good. Oh, hit the spot that yeah. day. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, really did. Yeah, it was yeah, good, we, wasn't it? Was it was just right. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've never had a vegetarian haggis before. It was very, very nice. It had a similar texture to normal haggis and it was just as flavoursome. Um, yeah, really good, really, really tasty. Sort of had a couple of cups of tea and just chilled out and yeah, yeah, had a nice was, evening. Uh, yeah, relax. It's been a long day, but a very productive day. It's been very good. Um, mm. So it was just nice, you know, let the food settle. Definitely. Let the drink settle and just uh, look at the fire and get a bit of conversation going. Yeah. It's really, yeah. really nice. So It's been good. Yeah, so I'm just going to finish this up and um, and then we're going to we're gonna turn in for the night. We, um, we're set up about uh, 
50 yards or so away from where we had the fire just because the wind was blowing this way and that way the smoke wouldn't blow into where we're sleeping tonight so that's why we did that so we'll just make sure that that's all out and um, tidy up a little bit and uh, we'll see you in the morning good night Morning folks, we uh, have woken up to a very pleasant morning. I slept extremely well actually. The um, under blanket and top quilt combination worked very well. It was quite cold last night. Um, I'd say it was probably down to about three degrees um, and we had a really quite blustery wind cutting right across us so that the wind obviously then drops the temperature a bit more. I, I would say it probably felt a bit more like closer to zero really didn't Easily. it? Yeah, yeah so um, at the peak of the, uh, the depth of the uh, night. Definitely yeah yeah so it was it was a bit chilly but I was toasty and warm so that's good. Um, we've just got the fire lit and uh, got the kettle on for uh, for a hot drink. I'm absolutely gagging for a cup of coffee and then uh, we're going to think about getting some breakfast on the go. We haven't got huge amounts of time this morning um, we need to get things packed away and get back on the water so uh, we can start paddling back. Obviously Zed's got to drive all the way back back down to London um, and uh, I've got some stuff I need to take care of this afternoon. So yeah, we shall have breakfast, pack up and then head off. So just while we're waiting for the kettle to boil, I thought I would show you my new knife. This is to replace my TBS bore, which I've had for ages and I, and I really like the TBS bore, but it's a bit of a brute of a knife and um, it's just too big and clunky really for, for small tasks. This is much more of an all-rounder. I had a knife maker from Wales make this for me, a guy called Rob Evans, um, who I'm sure some of you will have come across or will have heard of, and um, it is an absolute delight. It's RWL 34 Super Steel. Handle is my carter. You know, I spend a lot of time canoeing. I need a handle that, I, that I'm not gonna have to keep maintaining and keep oiling. My carter works for me, and then I've got these white and orange liners. It's got a butt plate on it as well, so I can use it for um, crushing hazelnuts or you know anything where you need to have, you know, you might need to pound or break something. So that's gonna be really useful. It's got a very slight drop point and a Scandinavian grind. Absolutely lovely knife. He also made the sheath, a dangler sheath with a belt loop with press studs on, so I haven't got a take my belt half off to put the knife on, which is good. And um, the knife fits in there perfectly. Lovely, lovely work. Rob takes commissions for making knives, but he's not doing at the moment. He's got a lot of stuff going on and he's super busy at the moment. So um, what he's doing is, as he makes knives, he's putting them up for sale, um, either on Instagram or on his Facebook page or on his YouTube channel and I'll put links to all of those um, in the description box down below so, so check them out if you if you um, you know you're thinking you might like to have 
a stunningly beautiful knife like this too. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Cheers, buddy. Ah. Oh. Want it on both slices? Um. However it comes, mate, that'd be lovely. Oh, look at that. Woohoo! Right, well that is us all packed away, cleared away. We've had a, a really nice night, had some good grub, a good old chin wag around the fire, comfortable night's sleep. You can't really ask for much more than that. Thanks, Ed, for uh, a really good evening. Thank you for your hospitality, Simon. It's been great. Take it easy, guys. It's been Pleasure. nice seeing you again. Zed's going to be putting a video together of this trip as well, so uh, don't forget to go over and check out his video on his channel. Um, if you don't know, I'll put a a link in the description box below to, to his channel. So we're going to get everything loaded into the canoe and head off for our paddle back. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.